plugins. What are they? If you are new to making music in a computer, you have definitely come across the term plugin. I'm going to tell you what they are, how they work, why you should care. So first, let's start with this synth application. This is a regular standalone app. This is not a plugin. It's Centorial. You download it, you install it, you open it, and here's your synth. Now, the only problem with a standalone synth like this is you can't record it into your recording app, right? Like you're using Ableton or Logic or one of the many applications out there, also known as DAWs that you use to make music. And I want to use this synth along with other sounds, but I can't here in this synth application. And that's what plugins are for. A plugin is just like an application, except it's designed to be opened inside of a recording app. So you can use it to make music alongside other plugins. So let's hop over to Logic. So I have installed the plugin version of Centorial Synth. It's called Primer. And I did it the same way. I just downloaded it. I installed it. That's how you install all plugins. However, once it's installed, you, you won't see it in your applications or program files folder. You can't just open it directly. It's only designed to be opened and used inside a recording app. And each recording app does it a bit differently as far as the layout is concerned. But for example, here in Logic, my default track is an electric piano. But I want to open Primer in here. So in their case, you go into this menu, go to AU Instruments. I'll explain what AU means. And Audible Genius is the name of our company. And there's Primer. And now it's the same synth from the standalone version. The same controls, the same as X sound. But now it's inside Logic. So I can record it into Logic and play it back. And there you go, and I can make another track, and I can open up a different plugin, and I can do drums, and bass, and whatever I want. That's why plugins are such a huge part of computer music, because they, they are the sounds, they are the instruments. As you can see, I've got a lot going on here. So whenever you install one, it just gets added to your DAW's list. Now, this is a synth. There, of course, are also samplers, like for drums or real instruments like piano. And then you can also use effects. So let's say I want to add some reverb, but I don't want to use Primer's built-in reverb. Well, I can grab a reverb plugin. Let's grab this first one. So now my Primer plugin is being routed through this Chroma reverb. So you can see you, you have an endless variety here. There's so many plugins and you can just kind of chain them all together and create whatever sounds you want. Now, you probably come across different plugin formats like VST and AU and maybe even AAX. This isn't your ordinary synth tutorial. This is Syntorial. Making programming synths easy with video game-like training, teaching you how to program synth patches by ear. Each lesson starts with a demonstration, then an interactive challenge with over 200 lessons. Once you complete the program, you'll be able to create the sounds you hear using almost any synthesizer. Try the award-winning Centorial today. Now, you've probably come across different plugin formats like VST and AU and maybe even AAX. These are simply just file types. The primer, for example, comes as a VST and AU. The synth itself is identical. You won't get a different sound, different controls. It's all exactly the same. Where this matters is with your host, whether it's Logic, Ableton, FL Studio, whatever your recording app is, you need to check what file types it allows. So, for example, VST is the most common. Almost all recording apps allow you to use VST plugins inside of them. So much so that the term VST is often used instead of the term plugin. What VST do you have? How many VSTs do you have? I got a new VST. It's actually a specific format, but it's such a major uh, and popular format that it's kind of ubiquitous. However, Logic, for example, does not allow VST. It only allows AU. And there's another DAW called Pro Tools. It only allows AAX. So as far as you're concerned, look at whatever host you're using, find out what formats it allows, and just get your plugin in that format. 
Now, each developer decides what formats they want to create. We decided for VST AU. Some might only do VST, you know. So you you may not have access to the exact plugin you want, but once you know the format your host accepts, look for that format. And by the way, there's VST and now there's VST3, which is the latest version of VST. But again, as far as you're concerned, just check your host. If it supports VST3, get the VST3. If it supports VST, get the regular VST. So this is Mac. Windows works the same. You download, you install, you open your DAW, there's your plugin. However, iOS is a bit of a different story. Now in iOS, there's only one format, AUV3. And instead of being called a plugin, they're often referred to as extensions because they're actually extensions of the regular standalone app. So at the top left corner, you see Primer. And we download that from the App Store, just as you would any other app. And if I click that and open it directly, it's basically just a standalone synth. Now, if I want to record it, I've got to go into a recording app. So let's go into GarageBand. Now, GarageBand, like other apps, give you different types of instruments you can add. And a lot of them have an AUV3 extension. So you see at the bottom left here, Audio Unit Extension. Tap that, and now you see Primer. Because any app that has an extension version automatically installs the extension when you install the app. So you don't have to go searching for an AUV3 extension. You just have to find apps that have extensions built into them. Once you install the app, here it is. And so I just tap Primer. I can play and record Primer inside GarageBand. Okay, well, I hope that was helpful in understanding the whole plugin system. And if you have any questions, post them below in the comments and I'll happily answer. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We post videos every week about synthesizers and sound design.